A few of my family members are big Tennessee football fans and also coin collectors, so for Christmas this year I decided to make them some boxes sized to hold coin slabs and also try to stain them Tennessee orange to match the uh, football fan theme. Now boxes are always a great woodworking project because so many things you build in woodworking are just start with a simple box. So it's a great way to work on your fundamentals of square joinery, square stock, and really there is a box style no matter what your skill set is. You can use pocket holes and plywood, or you can practice whatever Dorian Brack's latest double half blind waxing moon might have dovetail me. Anyway, I decided to make these boxes out of some quarter sawn white oak that I had. Now, you've been watching me break it down and mill it to size, but if you're not set up to work with rough stock, then you can just pick up some lumber that is already surfaced. Just be mindful to try to pick the straightest and flattest boards you can, or you're going to have a lot of headaches trying to get everything to match up well. I started with four quarter stock, which is just over an inch thick. But even after a milling, they're a lot thicker than I wanted for boxes this small, so I resaw them in half with a bandsaw. For small pieces, I like to completely mill everything before resawing, so that way after I run it through the bandsaw, I have a good side left on each piece to go through the planer, so I don't have to go back to the jointer with something really thin. Now these boxes finished out to be about 3 8 of an inch thick, which is really still a little bit thick for boxes like this, but I wanted to do unreinforced miter joints, so being a little bit thicker gives more glue surface to make them stronger. Now the sizes on these boxes actually ended up being kind of tricky for me. I'm not a coin collector and I assume that the plastic protective coin slabs were all about the same size, so I looked one up and just went with that. But then I found out there's actually tons of different standard sizes. So one super obvious takeaway here is if you're building a specialty box, make sure you actually know the size of whatever you're going to be putting in it. To cut the miters on all the pieces, I swapped out my rip blade for my cross cut blade and my table saw and then cut them with a miter gauge. I cut a miter on the end of each board and then set up this stop block to cut each piece to length to make sure they all came out the same size, which is a key part of having a box come together well. It doesn't matter near as much what size the pieces are so long as they're identical. Now, off camera I performed the trick to getting perfect miters which is making test cuts. I just took two scraps, mitered them, and checked the joint with a square. If you want to be overzealous, you can just take four scrap pieces, miter them all to the same size, and if your blade isn't perfectly at 45 degrees, it's going to be really obvious when you try to put them together because all the corners are going to have some gaps and it's not going to look right. After I was done with the mitering, I cut a dado for the bottoms and top to sit and ride in. I switched back to my rip blade for this because it leaves a flat bottom. The board is thicker than my blade so I had to take multiple passes and again the trick here to getting a great setup is to use a piece of scrap as a test piece to confirm everything is set up right before running your actual stock through. Once all the dados were done, I cut the top off of what's going to be the front piece and that way there will be room for the top to slide on and off. Now it's time for assembly. Now if you're expecting me to do the normal blue painter's tape trick instead of the clamps, then I've got quite the surprise for you because I'm actually going to use green tape. Now getting blue squeeze out out of the inside corners of a box is a super pain, so I went ahead and taped off the inside corners first to make cleanup a lot easier. And pro tip, don't forget to put the bottoms in. Also sand your pieces before you glue them up like I forgot to. To make the top slide in their dados better and give a cleaner look, I chamfered the top edges of it with a block plane, and then I went over to the drill press and put in a finger hole to make it easier to pull out and took care to make sure I sanded it well so no one gets any splinters. Now it's time for the fun part, finishing. 
So like I said before, I'm doing this for some Tennessee fans, so I want to dye them orange, so I went with two coats of General Finish's orange dye stain on the boxes. I'm normally not one for dyeing hardwoods, but the way dye stains work is they don't hide the grain as much, and so the way the color brought out of the grain and highlighted the rays and the wood actually really grew on me. And the dye stain looks cool, but doesn't offer any protection, so I took them outside and sprayed them with several coats of lacquer to get a good protective finish on it. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this and took something away. Uh, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. Thank you.